Good morning. Uh, how much of this is also thanks to strong economic growth, as President Trump likes to point to, low unemployment figures as well. I'm not even going to bring in Pinterest here as inspiration <laughs> for all these DIY projects yet. Well, it is. I think you have a, a lot of different things are happening all at once. You have, you have lowest unemployment in a long time. You have higher wages. You have the, the pent-up demand, right? Because a lot of projects haven't been done for many years. And um, plus add to that, the, I think the ease of the experience and the incredible customer experience that you get at a Home Depot or a Lowe's or an Ace, it's incredible. It's easy to shop. They have so many SKUs but good SKUs. So they did a project, I think Home Depot did a project recently where they went by, went in and said, okay, what should we, um, what should we sell? And they did it and you go in there and it's a great experience. Mm -hmm. Melissa, weigh in here, what is working? And we should also say too, in the backdrop of this, I mean, both of these stocks, Lowe's and Home Depot's higher in with the devastating effects of Hurricane Florence, many people expect that these stocks would benefit from a situation like that. They definitely are benefiting, which is unfortunate because obviously a hurricane is a tragedy. But Lowe's is making brand new all time highs today. 115 is the next target. It's almost there. It's about 50 cents away right now. But overall, these stocks have been strong. In fact, one of the reasons I'm very bullish on these stocks is they are moving ahead of the market. They are rallying and making new highs before the market. Both Home Depot and Lowe's have recently, in the last week, made brand new all time highs, and the market hasn't. The SP hasn't. So that's a good sign. These stocks are a buy right now. They look bullish. And their next earnings are not for a couple of months away, not until the end of November. So, okay, so there's a lot of room for them to move up. Well, so Melissa, I want to I want to talk a little bit and, and hear from you about how these these companies and these these retailers are safe from the, the quote unquote retail apocalypse that's been happening. I mean, what should they be worried about? What should investors be worried about in terms of, of disruption by large online players? Look, we got to talk Amazon and Walmart. Right. What's interesting, though, is I put this in a separate category of other retailers because it's home improvement. Because right now, if you look at some of the home builders like KBH, those stocks are in downtrends. And yet you have these these retail companies, these home improvement companies at brand new all time highs. So you say, well, wait a minute. They're obviously doing something where individuals, not just the builders, are going out and wanting to spend money to make home improvements, just like your previous guest said. So Part of that is why the tax savings people are saving more money so they have more money to spend. They're also feeling confident in spending money, whereas maybe if you had something to fix in your home, like your roof or even a big thing, you might not have spent it. But now you're feeling like, wait a minute, I'm going to save money on my taxes this year. I feel like things are going to improve. My job is more stable. And so they're willing to go out and spend money in their home. Also, you got to remember, interest rates are on the rise. So people might say, wait a minute, I have to fix up this thing in my home to sell it. And so people are probably prepping to do that because they want to sell their home if they do before interest rates go up or maybe buy something else or maybe even refinance. And sometimes people have to fix certain things in their home in order to get that done. So they're spending yeah, the money right. to do it. Well, and to your point, Melissa, we look at a KB home chart and we see that it is up today, but still over the past year down after a decent spike during that spring selling season leading into the spring selling season. That is, Perry, we want to bring you in as well. Yes, the economy is doing well. 4% growth in the latest GDP report that we saw. But we also hear, too, that millennials finally are starting to have household formation. Right. And what kind of momentum does that give this sector? Incredible momentum. And to your point about Amazon, you can't go get a piece of plywood delivered to you yes. online. Yes. <laughs> I w that's, yeah, I mean, I, I just... A lot of people have said that Amazon can't do this, and then they do it. What do well, you think? Well, here's the thing. I think there's an immediate, I think when people go to a Home Depot, they go to Lowe's, they want something, they they want it, and they need it for that weekend project. But how is online helping the, the home these retailers is that people order, and they pick up at the store. I think half of the orders are being picked up at the store, but then the people, when they're there, they go in and they buy more things. So Perry, I want to go back to something that you said earlier, and you used the word experience, which is a word right. that we hear so frequently right. with regard to what is with not only millennials, but also with the way that, that retailers can essentially be immune yes. to online uh, disruption. Yep. What is working experientially at Lowe's and Home Depot? What are they doing right that other brick and mortar retailers
retailers. Can sure, and I mean, I'll tell you from my personal experience, and I'm not very handy, like I'm good behind the desks. Yeah, <laughs> Not me too. so much with the hammer. I can't. But, <laughs> but, you know, when I go to Home Depot, the people there are very smart. They have very good customer service. I think their training has been amazing, okay, because people know where things are. They have someone right at the front of the store. I need to go buy, I need to go look at flooring. They tell you exactly what aisle to go to, or I need a, a hinge. They tell you where to go. So I think that's number one. Number two, the, the stores are very well maintained. Mm -hmm. um, number three, they have what you're looking for. And it's just easy. Unless it's, they're out. I got to say, I was at a Lowe's a few weekends <laughs> ago and they were out of a particular stone that I was looking for. But oh, anyway, no. Melissa, we want to bring you in as well. Look, tariffs. Announcement of another round of tariffs late last night from the Trump administration. China retaliating early this morning. Home Depot says it's going to invest a billion dollars over the next five years to transform its supply chain. How do tariffs potentially affect these companies? Well, it could, and I'll say how, because Lowe's, for example, sells a lot of big appliances, and some of these big appliances come from outside of the U.S., so that would definitely affect that pricing. Now, will Lowe's compensate for that, or, or, or even Home Depot find other suppliers? We have yet to see. Remember, this whole thing with the tariffs, the reason Trump is doing this is to fix the system that is broken and to fix it permanently, or at least for a long, long time out. So this is going to take time. It may not be fixed by between now and the end of 2018, but there's hopes that it will be because ultimately, obviously, China, you know, we have, we have, they, China has more to lose than we have to lose. So I'm not sure why they're doing this, except for they're playing hardball here and so is Trump. So as far they're, as people yeah. going... And they're going and they're trying to buy things in the store. Again, you can't buy lumber in the sh uh, on Amazon, but also if you want to go buy a washer and dryer, you can go to Lowe's, you can buy a washer and dryer, mm -hmm. and they come and install it. So that's, you know, all of that is convenience. When you have big appliances like that, it makes it more convenient to shop at those places. Also picking your paint colors, you can go and pick your paint yeah. colors, mix them. There's a lot of benefits to going there. As far as the cost, though, with the tariffs, yeah. it definitely could have been. We're, we're unfortunately running up against the clock, so we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you so much for joining us. And Perry Mandarino, Senior Managing Director and Head of Restructuring at B. Riley FBR. He's also co-head of investment banking there. And Melissa Armo, always great to see you. She's the owner of the stock swoosh. Guys, thanks so much for joining us.